how are you? Happy Monday! I hope everybody had a great weekend, staying indoors or at least getting outside to get some fresh air. Um, thanks for checking out the, the cooking extravaganza for Monday. So uh, if you didn't make it for my birthday party on Saturday, uh, I think it might still be on my Facebook page. So anyway, check it out. We had a good time. So uh, you know, birthdays come but once a year and, you know, pandemics only come once a century. So, hey, you know, got to combine the two when possible. So, anyway, I think, to, I think this year was the first year in my entire life my own mother did not send me a birthday card. So, but which is fine because we didn't want her to leave her place, you know, just to send me a card. I mean, <laughs> I accept money through, uh, <laughs> you know, PayPal, Venmo, you name it. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> so anyway, I uh, hope everybody's doing great. Tonight, we're going to make something super simple. This is great for anytime you're doing uh, just a quick, uh, easy, healthy dinner where you don't want a lot of carbs and you know, maybe you had a little too much over the weekend, so we gotta rein it in during the week at least and uh, just keep it simple. So we're gonna do a, a wild caught Alaskan cod, just a super simple white fish and some broccoli. I'm going to show you how to make broccoli. Uh, sometimes we just get really bored with broccoli and uh, we wanna little zip it up a little bit or just have broccoli be a little different. I'm not a big, fan of eating broccoli raw because sometimes it has a lot of uh, extra, <clears throat> yeah, uh, so <laughs> we're going to cook it um, right alongside with the fish. So this is going to be super easy and I will show you what we have here. Now I had frozen in my freezer uh, when, you know, when the, when everybody started going grocery shopping and loading up their fridge and their freezers, I bought some Alaska, Alaskan cod. <clears throat> this is uh, wild caught. It's delicious. It's light. It's flaky. It's sustainably harvested. It's uh, either Alaskan cod or Pacific cod. Uh, the um, there's also Atlantic cod. It's a little different. It's a little sweetier. Sweetier. Hey, yeah, everything's sweetier. Um, anyway, it's a light flaky fish is very popular. So if you like fish and chips, that's, this is what you would use for fish and chips. But sometimes we don't like the ramifications of fish and chips. It gets a little too greasy, a little too heavy, and we want to just keep it light because this is a light weeknight meal. So um, it's boneless, it's skinless. You can bake it, you can fry it, you can barbecue it, you can, you know, just top it with whatever, so I thought we'd put it alongside the broccoli. So what we're gonna do with this is make sure it's kind of dry, so I have a little paper towel over it. So once it is thawed, I thawed it in the refrigerator and I had it, I had it sitting frozen in a bowl in the fridge overnight, boom, now it's ready to go. And just kind of want to dab it off with a paper towel, get it nice and dry. Now this th this fish is so thin you really don't need to flip it while it's in the oven. So pick what side you want to put it. Uh, the little decorations on here, and uh, now you could use your your gloves since everybody has gloves now. But I uh, actually somewhere. All right. Well, we're not going to use the gloves right now because it's just me, and I wash my hands twenty five times in an hour. So. All right, we're gonna use this macadamia nut oil. I really like this. You could use an extra virgin olive oil, avocado oil. The macadamia nut oil is really nice because it's very light. There's not a lot of flavor. It has a little higher smoke point. And I'm just gonna drizzle a little bit on there. You know how I like to measure everything. And we're just gonna drizzle it on there and rub it with our fingers. You know, it takes you back to kindergarten. It's like finger painting, you know? So, hey, hey, Doug, hey, Gail, how are you? Gosh, gosh, everybody's coming in from all over the country. I love it. So, uh, welcome, welcome. All right, so I have one hand that I've touched the fish with, one that I haven't. So always keep uh, either a towel for your other hand. So when you touch other things like this, 
to open them or have them open already. Uh, that way you won't get all your fish stuff all over. So what I have here is spiked seasoning. This is one of my favorite seasonings. I've been using it forever. It's uh, no MSG, but there's that 39 or 37 or 38 different seasonings in here. It's kind of like a uh, all-purpose and not like a Lawry's sea salt, nothing, uh, I mean a Lawry's steak salt like that. So um, just a little bit of oil and a little bit of seasoning. Now there's already some salt in here, so you really don't have to add your own. Um, if you want it salt free because the doctor told you so, uh, they also make a salt free one. It's not as quite as tasty, but salt really isn't necessarily always the problem. When we are making our food ourselves and we see the salt going on, it's when you get into packaged foods and processed foods that already have a high sodium content in them. Uh, that's when you kind of want to worry about that. So did you see how simple that was? Fish, little uh, oil, some seasoning, and we're ready to go. Um, one other little seasoning, I'm just going to put a little bit extra on. This is the cayenne. So we're just going to get a nice little kick to it. And I will pop that in the oven. It's at 400 degrees. And you do not want to overcook this fish. So I'm going to put it on for 10 minutes. And always put your timer on. It is a sign of a multitasker. All right, so we got that on 10 minutes. Now, we're going to do the broccoli right there with it. And the broccoli will be super simple. We've got our head of broccoli. Give that a quick little rinse. Let it rain. Yeah. <laughs> Can you tell I grew up Catholic? All right. So, ooh. All right. Get your broccoli. I'm just going to cut off the very end of that because that's a little dry. But what you do want to do is you want to save these stems. These stems have all that nutrient. Uh, density in them as well, not just the florets, but when you do uh, keep the stem on there, you're getting just as much fiber, just as much nutrients, all that good stuff. So don't let your body miss out on that because that way we can keep healthy. And while we're all quarantined in our homes, we can uh, still at least keep our bodies going. A, we need the fiber. Two, we need all the vitamins and the nutrients and the minerals of eating fresh food. And speaking of fresh food, uh, if you haven't ordered something with a local farmer, a local CSA, or um, some kind of a delivery service of baskets or uh, packages, or not packages, baskets of fresh vegetables delivered right to your house, it is booming season out there. And here in Georgia, the weather is fine. Well, it's a little cloudy out right now, but it is, um, it's growing season and stuff is really starting to pop. So you'll get a lot of fresh produce. It's usually a very good deal. It's helping support farmers, which we really, really need to support farmers right now. And then you're not going into a grocery store. So sometimes they deliver to a pickup spot where it's just kind of a drive by. So that's a good idea. Or start your own garden, of course. That would be ideal. You've got the land, get that going. What else are you doing all day since nobody can go to work? All right, so look at how much broccoli that cut up to. So because we're keeping this extra part on here, that's gonna get roasted just right along with it. It's gonna be delicious. And let's see, I'll, I think I'll try extra virgin olive oil for this one and uh, drizzle that on there. Always measure carefully. And, you know, if we kept with the same seasonings, we could do a spike seasoning on that as well. And we're just going to toss that. Just a little bit of seasoning here, there. You know, you could just use salt, pepper, whatever you have, whatever you like. And I'm just going to pop that on our tray. Spread those out so they're all going to cook individually. And we're gonna pop those right in the oven, right next to that fish. And we still have seven minutes. So you really actually don't have to cook broccoli a whole long time. So pop it in there. Oh man, that fish is already looking delicious. And 
Let's see, can I get this out of our way? So what else we're gonna serve with that is we're gonna do a little salad. So right now I have some Boston lettuce, some bib lettuce, whatever you wanna call it. Boston bib lettuce, whatever. Boston, I don't know if it really actually came from Boston though. It might be a little cold up there yet. Uh, Tennessee, we got this one in Tennessee. All right, that's just our little neighbor to the north. Now, what you wanna do with your lettuce is you wanna always make sure they're washed. If they're already triple washed in a container, you're good to go. And I'm going to cut off the stem here. And we're gonna see these huge leaves. These are delicate, they're delicious. They make great salads. They make, oh, you know what else they make? They make great little uh, things if you want to have a, uh, like a low carb dinner with like tacos, you can make them with this kind of lettuce as well. So I'm not gonna probably need all of these. But I'm gonna get this little fancy thing here. It's called a salad spinner. Not everybody has a salad spinner, or if you do, you wonder why you have it, because you're like, what do I need that for? Well, when you do want to wash your greens, you want them dry, so when you, when you are making your salad, and you're trying to put some salad dressing or a vinaigrette on there, you want those leaves to be dry, because otherwise your dressing's gonna slip right off. So, all right, we're gonna put these back in a little, in our little greenhouse container here. Right. And those will be for lunch tomorrow. So, so we put them in a little bit of water here and we're gonna give them a rinse. Now all that water can just you know, go for the plants in your house. And we're gonna give it a little spin, spin it dry. And these are, some of these little projects uh, are good for kids to do because, you know, it's something without a sharp knife here, you know, they can figure this out. I mean, you know, what were we doing at that age? Uh, Yo-yos, maybe, slinkies? Oh, wow, that really, I've heard about those things. I don't know what they really are. <laughs> slinky, slinky. Oh, man. All right. Now I have some dry greens. Now here's how much water was still left. Can you see all that? That, watch. That was still left on the leaves and you could still keep going. Now one of these salad spinners is great. Some of them uh, break down where they're nice and thin so you can store them easily. You know, sometimes they're, they're big and bulky and you don't have that extra cabinet for them, but they really are important. You could also do this with uh, fresh herbs, so you have some fresh basil or fresh thyme or fresh uh, cilantro and parsley and all that, and uh, you wash that because a lot of times it has a lot of grit on it. And so, when you have a salad spinner, you can dry those quickly as well. All right, so we get our little salad bowl here. Now, with Boston lettuce or bib lettuce, you don't even need a knife. You don't even have to break it down, but when I eat salad, I, I kind of like it to go in my mouth and not around my mouth. So it's one of those things. It's really a sexier way to eat salad, so, uh, right? Oh, oh, hi, Cindy. I, you need a salad spinner too? Yeah, I, I do. I, I use my salad spinner all the time, so. Um, uh, just, you know, OXO makes, Oh, this one's Xylus, but OXO and Xylus. I think OXO is the number one rated. I actually have two salad spinners. Shocker. Um, but. All right, so we've got our greens in our bowl, and I'm gonna take a little bit of that extra virgin olive oil, drizzle that, and I have some of that lemon, Sicilian lemon white balsamic vinegar. This really makes your salads pop. This is so good. and. Uh, it's, uh, I have a Tuscan olive oil and a, a lemon, a Sicilian lemon vinegar. I don't know, they're from different parts of the country, but. All right, just a little splash of that, a little bit of salt, some fresh cracked pepper. 
and give that a little toss. So you always have a nice little green salad with whatever you're making. And you can put it with the bowl that you're using. Oh, uh, yeah, we'll just use this bowl. Gosh, we have so many things we could possibly put on this beautiful uh, salad. Of course, do I have them sitting on my counter? No. So I'm gonna have to grab all the, uh, oh, I do have a few olives. We have some of those olives that we had yesterday or for the party. So we'll get our little fork and we can pop those around. Make sure you know that there's pits in those before you bite into those. We don't want demo work uh, any more than we already did. So, radishes. Mm. Now this stuff, this is so good for you, so full of antioxidants. So a couple radishes go a long way. So we'll just slice those up nice and thin. And we can pop them right on our salad. Roasted radishes are just as delicious. If you've never roasted radishes, that's your next project. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll just do that tomorrow. Get some, you know, I've got my, my CSA box coming right from the farm. Oh, I think, I think that's on Wednesday. Uh, okay. So also add some beautiful color. All right. So we're going to check that fish. Look at how fast and delicious. All right. Now, our broccoli has turned bright green, so you know all those uh, antioxidants and those uh, detoxification elements are in your green food. So always find something green and something colorful in your everyday meal, and um, your body will respond happily. So, all right. Now, uh, I always like, love to have some radishes on hand for that reason right there where you need a little something extra in your, your salad. All right, I uh, need a spatula. So um, we'll just take one of these pieces and we're gonna pop it right in our dish. Yeah. And then grab a little bit of that broccoli. So broccoli is pretty much good at any uh, juncture. So you could do it raw. You can even get it nice and crispy as well. But nice and at least super green here where you're getting all those vitamins, nutrients, and you're keeping the stem in there so we can keep that beautiful skin that you all have. So. so I'm gonna put the rest of those in the oven and voila. Oh, wait, how about a pretty lemon? So we got a little bit of lemon. Now, a lot of people like to put lemon on their fish. If I put lemon on my fish, I would squeeze it on afterwards. I don't squeeze it on uh, before because then you're just kind of wasting that beautiful lemon juice that you can give it a little squeeze and then you can pop it in your dish. And voila, you've got dinner on the table in 10 minutes, okay? There's no excuses anymore. Oh, David Patrick, how are you? Wow, nice to see you. Good, good. All right, so yes, David, I'm still making the same food I made 20 years ago. Yes, I know. It doesn't change much, but... Um, that's because I cook right from what's growing in the garden or just keeping everything simple, as fresh, as the least amount of processing as possible. And uh, it just keeps you lively, vivacious, and full. So this is a perfectly balanced meal and it won't fill you up too much because we only want to eat till about 80% full because that way we have some room for some digestion going on and then we can watch all our favorite things on Netflix and maybe treat uh, yourself to a bowl of popcorn later.
Okay, sounds good, right? All right, good to see you guys. Hope everybody's doing well. I gotta go find a glass of wine or something. This is perfect for uh, a white wine right now. So, um, all right, so uh, great to see you. Yeah, what? I was a vegan then. You're right, I was a vegan then. Yeah, Megan the Vegan has now become the recovering vegan. I'm a recovering vegan. I've gone, I've started a 12 step program on that and uh, no. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I, uh, I got hungry. So I started eating other things and uh, I, I couldn't, my body couldn't keep up with it. So I, uh, I had to add some fish and some chicken and things back into my everyday eating lifestyle. So, so still lean and mean. So yeah, anyway. Um, good to see y'all. Bye, Cindy. Thanks for tuning in. Hey, Eric. Wow, great. I can actually see the whole thing now. I usually can't see this far. I moved it a little closer so I can see. So anyway, good to see you guys. Have a good one, and uh, we'll see you later this week, and I'll uh, see what's cooking in the kitchen. All right, bye.